Larry says, I'm curious if you've come across the question around Microsoft Forms and if they're fairly susceptible to bot attacks as there are no recaptcha. Uh, our organization believes their usage for collecting external information surpasses their tolerance for risk. I'm sure uh, not going to argue about their risk posture. Curious if you've seen that widely as well. Now, I mean, there's we were talking about this earlier uh, before we started recording. Um, you know, I mean, there's things about it, and we'll provide the link to the support page about security and privacy in Microsoft Forms, and whether it's compliant. You've got the different things listed there. It's you know HIPAA, BAA, GDPR, uh, you know compliant. Um, they meet FERPA protection standards. I mean, so it's it's pretty solid. As far as there's anything else about the risk profile of forms, has anybody heard something? I mean, I... the biggest risk I think to forms is when we think about um, injecting uh, data, bad data, corrupt data, or bad attachments. Um, and so this is where you really have to have a good governance policy. So if you've already architected your infrastructure and your content management correctly on the back end, so you've already defined what file types can and cannot come into your um, system, you've already maybe put DLP out so that certain data isn't allowed to come into your system at all. Um, let alone, this is kind of where people talk about, should we allow anonymous forms or not? Um, you know, it can we allow them and who's allowed to do them and how do we manage them and how do we monitor them? But it all comes down to governance, right? So as long as you have determined what your risk tolerance is, you've already set that up behind the scenes for content management, for information management, for policies, for DLP, then the form itself is not the problem. Can it bring risk into your organization? A hundred percent. But if you've mitigated that risk to your risk tolerance level behind the scenes, then the form itself should be perfectly fine. If you're not doing all those other things, then absolutely an anonymous form where you allow people to add attachments to it is probably a big risk to your organization. Yeah, look, I... With the amount of organizations that I'm dealing with and the type of protection that they've already put in place, if they've got that high risk tolerance, they have already have done a lot of that due diligence. Um, you know, in, in Australia, we've got, uh, you know, your digital blueprint for government here, and that's pretty prescriptive on what they can and can't do. And forms, and I deal with a lot of pretty heavy security type organizations and dealing with one at the moment that is extremely, extremely risk averse and heavy um, and are very high on security and they have turned on forms right all of them have turned on forms after having done their due diligence around it and not having a problems even things like i mean if you're dealing with external parties for example forms will turn off the ability to be able to add attachments that alone to know it, it, it the moment you make it an external um form it's like no turn it off and there's other products for that you know you've got the you know you uh, dynamics your dynamics 365 which goes into your customer uh, and you get all your forms through there and then that's got all its security and that's meant more for externals in a lot of respects um so you know there are different ways that you can actually go but i'm i'm not seeing i'm not seeing the issues coming up that's like that personally i all i say is is that uh when you allow anonymous users to upload uh questionable file types, you are uh, opening yourself up to any other uh, malicious file types that that user has used and, and uh, you know, beyond that. So it's, it's, uh, I was trying to make like kind of an STD joke and it was, wasn't working out, but when you get <laughs> the, the, the more risk with your attachments on emails than you ever will for something like forms. I mean, what you've got to put it in context guys, really. I mean, there are so many other ways that you could get hit. I don't see forms as being a potential way to be hit. In a lot of they're, they're not going to randomly trip over the form link and accidentally like have their bot single out your form and then try to upload malicious data. I mean, they're going to try to do it kind of across the board, but it's not going to be targeted at forms to your point. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, look, you can be foolish around it again, like anonymous access published, po posted out publicly in a place where you're going to attract the behavior where somebody wants to go and cause problems. Um, but, but on that yeah, question, you're right. I saw. Generally, you're not. Yeah, I saw it like when when um, the pandemic, when it was hitting and especially around Which Australia. Pandemic? Which one? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, with COVID. 
Um, yeah. You know, I saw so many of those, the QR codes that we were using right around Australia that were in just, we had anywhere you stepped into, whether it was a restaurant or a cafe or anywhere, you had to fill in a form. And that form had the QR code and there were so many of them I filled out that was using Microsoft Forms in the back end. Now, if we were going to really see an issue when it got, it just literally went bang globally, then I would have thought that it would have come up as a, you know, potential. Then I didn't hear anything around it as a security risk, not through any clients, anyone That's I was dealing point. with. Any, yeah, yeah. So I kind of go, hang on a second. I think it's a, it's out of proportion for, you know, for the way that I saw it used everywhere everywhere so uh, yeah yeah i i just think it's a bit of a mute point personally <laughs> it's like oh, no go away <laughs> <laughs> get good governance yes yeah yeah there's i mean look there are some articles that are out there um, um there's one this is a couple years old um there's an article about um uh, you, you, you do exfiltrate data and pull data back out. Um, there's, uh, again, there's there's some changes that have been happening, whether that's still valid in that, that case. I'm just looking to see if there's anything, you know, new. Um, but just about every one of the articles that you scan past, you know, the answer is, like, you know, it, is it secure? And every what I'm reading, they're like, yes, it's, it is a very secure solution. So um, talking about data protection and encryption, um, the user access and th authentication, again, you uh, don't recommend anonymous access, publish it out to Twitter. Um, just open yourself up to, to problems. Uh, but usually for most of the use cases inside your organization or, or external with trusted uh, customers and partners, um, it's pretty solid. I've used it for general, I've posted forms out on uh, and on Twitter and LinkedIn and you're going to ask for general feedback of, of that and haven't experienced any problems.